Hello and welcome to week number 17 of the 2024 baking challenge. Today we're making bread, but we're making pita bread, so it's a different kind of bread. Look, we really love pita bread around here. Scott makes the most amazing homemade hummus. It is seriously to die for. Um, but the store-bought pita bread kind of sucks. Number one, it's expensive, and number two, they're out of stock a lot, which is kind of shocking to me, but that's okay. So we are gonna make our own, and this is the golden pita bread recipe from King Arthur. Um, so gather your ingredients and let's bake. going to apologize in advance because I'm not doing this by hand. I'm using the bread machine. Um, it's gray, it's cloudy, my hands are really stiff and sore today. So I'm just going to let this thing do all the work for me. And quite frankly, if you don't have a bread maker, you may want to consider investing in one. This one is Hamilton Beach and I love it. It's been absolutely fantastic. I will post a link to it in the comments below or at least one similar because we've had this for a few years now. I'm not sure if they make it. This is the second bread maker that I've had. The first one that I had was years and years ago and they definitely don't make that one anymore. Uh, it was a beast, but I accidentally left dough overproofing in it and it went everywhere inside the machine and I could never um, clean off the coils properly. So that one had to go. I've been a lot more careful with this one. So you can do this with a bread machine. You can do it with a mixer. Um, if you do it with a mixer, you're gonna need to set your timers and everything because your dough is gonna have to proof. We have yeast. So your dough will have to proof a little bit. Um, if you are using a bread machine, your wet ingredients go in first, then your flour, your salt, your sugar, and then you make a little dip in the top and that's where your yeast goes. Then you put your bread machine on the dough setting and let it do its magic, okay? If you are not using a bread machine, I will go through this with you. Um, so you're gonna weigh your flour, um, I'm not going to weigh my flour because I honestly don't care that much today, uh, but handy kitchen scale. I actually have this out because I redid my sourdough starter today because I haven't been able to find sourdough bread in the store. Um, so I'm just going to start making my own again, whatever. It's fine. Uh, if you are wanting to do this recipe per the letter, it says to use a scale. If not, just make sure that you are leveling your uh, measuring cups. You can use the back of a knife or you can just shake it and chaos bake. That's kind of what I do. But today I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get my knife out so I can level. Now you are going to start with your flour. We are doing three cups of flour. Yes, three cups of flour. That's 360 grams of flour. Okay, you're gonna put that in a bowl and then you're gonna start adding the rest of your ingredients, which consists of two teaspoons of instant yeast. Um, now, the recipe on King Arthur's site lists a King Arthur Easy Roll Dough Improver. It's some kind of additive that makes it easier to roll the dough, as stated in the name. I'm not gonna use that. I'm not gonna put money into that. I, I'm not. I'm just not going to do it. So I'm not using that. Um, and it is optional. You don't have to use it. Two teaspoons of granulated sugar, a teaspoon and a half of table salt, a cup of water, and you're going to want it to be warm water. Remember, cold water won't activate your yeast. Hot water will kill your yeast. So warm water. Uh, and then two tablespoons of vegetable oil. Now, again, you're going to put all that in a bowl and you are going to mix it up. When it gets shaggy, then you're going to knead your dough. If you're kneading by hand, you're gonna do about 10 minutes. Uh, with a mixer, you're gonna to wanna to eye it. Remember, if you're using a dough hook on your mixer, sometimes your dough can climb that hook. I don't know if this is gonna do that because it has uh, vegetable oil in it, so it may not. Now for me, I'm going to start with my cup of water. So let me 
Turn on the faucet here and let it warm up. Um, do, 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 do. Let's see here. So knead the dough 10 minutes by hand or five minutes in the mixer. If you're using the bread machine, you put it on the dough setting and let it do all the work. You will want to prepare a lightly greased bowl if you are using the mixer or hand kneading method because you're gonna want your dough to be able to sit and rise. And having a greased bowl, you're gonna to wanna to use olive oil or vegetable oil for that. It's gonna help keep your dough from sticking to the sides of the bowl. Man, my water is taking forever to heat up today. Oh, there it goes, a little too hot. Um, remember, we just want it lukewarm. Too hot will kill our yeast. Now I gotta let it cool off. Gosh, I just can't get anything right today. Uh, that's kind of how it goes around here, that's okay. Checking to make sure it is level and it is. Make sure your paddle is in your mixer. If you're using a uh, bread machine, make sure your paddle is in there before you, before you start putting your ingredients in. I cannot tell you how many times I have started putting ingredients in and then notice the paddle laying right there and then you have to dig down through the, uh, through the flour and stuff. It's a mess. It's a mess. I do messy baking, not on purpose. It's just how we roll. So, all right. I'm gonna do six of these because this is a half cup. So that is one. Please, please, please let me count correctly. Two. Three. Four, five, and six. Now, if you see me going kind of up and down, like chopping on this, it's to work out any air bubbles and empty spaces that may be underneath the flower that I can't see. So that's what I do. I really need to get another apron. All right, so I've got my three cups of all-purpose flour. I need two teaspoons of granulated sugar. Boy, I'm glad I saw that because I thought that said tablespoons. Um, but it's not. It's two teaspoons, so I hope you didn't get that far. Uh, remember, the sugar activates the yeast. Sugar feed, well, water activates the yeast. Sugar feeds the yeast and makes it all nice and bubbly. So there's my two teaspoons of sugar. Oh my gosh, you know what? Put that on later. We gotta do the salt here. There's a teaspoon and a half of salt. Look at me actually measuring things and I'm just gonna kinda mix this around a little bit. All right, cup of water, two tablespoons of vegetable oil. I really hate measuring vegetable oil into a spoon because I make a gosh darn mess. I'm trying to keep it on the sides away from the center where I will be putting my yeast at. So I'm gonna just kinda <laughs> dig in there a little bit. Okay. That is done. Let me go down the list. I have my flour. I have my sugar, my salt, my water, my vegetable oil. All that's left is the yeast and that is going to be two teaspoons. Yes, two teaspoons of yeast. I like to make mine nice heaping teaspoons. There you go. Okay, so that's in there. Put this over here. Okay, when you are done kneading your flour by mixer by hand, you're gonna turn it out into your oiled bowl, okay? Put a dish towel over it. Sometimes I put like a warm dish towel over it if my house is um, kind of cool. Um, Cause again, you want that yeast to stay active and you are going to let that rest for one hour, okay? 
So that'll give your yeast a chance to rise, your dough a chance to rest. Let's see here. Okay, so before I let you go so that your dough can rest, one more thing. You're gonna open your oven. You're gonna make sure that nothing is in there and you are going to put your racks on the very lowest, lowest place that your racks can go because we are not making this pita bread in a skillet. We are making it in the oven at 500 degrees. Don't set your oven to 500 degrees now. We're gonna wait and do that right before we start rolling this out. So your dough's gonna sit and rest for an hour and uh, we'll come back in an hour and then we'll deal with the oven. But for now, put the rack on the lowest setting. I always forget to, if I have to move racks around, I always forget to do that until after I've preheated the oven. And it's a real pain, literally sometimes, adjusting those racks when they're, you know, 375 degrees. Okay, good luck with your dough. I'll see you back in an hour. Okay, so it hasn't quite been an hour for me, but I'm running out of time. So my dough has definitely puffed up quite a bit. What you're gonna do is you're gonna find a work surface and you're gonna use oil instead of flour, just a little bit of oil. Um, nothing too crazy. That was probably a little crazy. I'm using a cutting board here because um, I don't know. It just seems easy to clean. I can just put it in the, uh, I can just stick it in the dishwasher when I'm done. So that's, that's what I'm using. I'm using some, uh, some olive oil on a plastic cutting board. This may not end well for me. I don't know. But what we're gonna do here is turn out our dough. Woo! <laughs> yep. Pull out the paddle if you used a um, if you used the uh, bread machine. Oh my gosh, it's so loud. Dry dough, dry flour on there. Okay. Let's see here. We are going to divide this into eight equal pieces. Um, I feel like I should have gotten a bench scraper for this, but I didn't. So here's how I'm gonna accomplish this. I'm gonna roll it like Play-Doh. See, this is the part that always gets me. Um, is trying to make equal, trying to make equal parts here. It's a very, uh, this dough is definitely kind of taking, <laughs> taking its shape back. So, okay. Um, bench scraper, let's see. I think that's gonna be my best bet here. Of course, if I need to remember which drawer it's in. There we go. All right, we are cutting in half. In half again. In half one more time. And then I will, this is supposed to make eight. So you want eight equal pieces. So I will divide those into eight, divide this one into eight. They're not gonna be perfect because nothing is ever perfect. Um, got a little bit of dried flour on my work surface here. I don't want that to get worked into my flour. Okay, um, what I am gonna do is I'm gonna put some of these back in here so that I have a easier surface to, a clearer surface to work with. Um, we are going to roll these out uh, into six inch circles. And now my hands are greasy, which is why I pulled my hair back because I knew that was gonna happen. Now I have, I love my wooden rolling pin, but because I'm using oil, I'm going for metal here. And we are going to try to roll these out into 
circles. Again, not something I'm very good at. Oh, preheat your oven, 500 degrees. You want your 500 degree oven. And remember, my ruler here is six inches, so I've got a little ways to go with this particular circle of dough. Okay, maybe none of the dough on my work surface because I just don't have the space for it. You could use vegetable oil instead of olive oil if you want. They weren't terribly specific as to what kind of oil. Um, these are not going to be perfect circles. I mean, maybe if you have like a tortilla press, you could make them into perfect circles. I don't have one of those. Um, whenever I have made tortillas in the past, and yes, I have done that, and they were great, but they didn't look very good. So now I'm going to use my scraper. That's close enough to six inches as far as I'm concerned. I'm going to use my scraper and we're going to put it down on my pan. See if you can fit three to a pan. If not, that's okay. Two is fine. Also, you're just going to be baking for a little while. That's okay. All right. Kind of to keep the circle shape, you're going to go in like different directions while you're uh, while you're rolling out. Um, there's already, like I can already see some air bubbles in this, which is kind of cool. Oh, I'm a big fan of that. I might be making mine a little too big. I'll try to make the next batch a little smaller. I wonder, yeah, I think I can fit three on here, but I do wonder about maybe not necessarily rolling by hand, but when I worked at a pizza place in high school, we used to um, kind of stretch the dough ourselves. You know what? I think stretching is gonna, is just gonna lead to a mess. So I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna try <laughs> to just roll it as best as I can. This one might be a little bit thicker than the other ones just because it, yeah, not quite six inches here, but what are you gonna do? Nothing, you're gonna do nothing. <laughs> okay, boy, I wish my hands weren't covered in oil. Place circles on a lightly greased baking sheet and allow them to rest uncovered for 15 minutes while you preheat your oven to 500 degrees. I've already got my oven preheating because it takes a little while. Um, when you have your baking sheet full you're going and your oven heated, you're going to place the baking sheet on the lowest rack for 15 minutes. Oh my gosh, I'm trying to do this without getting... Um, <laughs> without getting oil everywhere. I really should have just prepared these ahead of time. All of them. But I didn't, so here we are. Okay. Our security camera just picked up a critter in the driveway. And it did that this morning. And it was crows. Because we had just recently fed the crows. They really love peanuts in the shell, so we make sure that we do our best to keep them in a good supply of peanuts. Because we like having crows around. They're friendly. They chase the hawks off. Good enough. Do you have your kitchen ruler yet? These things come in handy. I love it very much. Okay. Everything is slippery now. It's all covered in oil. I do. I do see some air bubbles um, in this dough. So that's, that's an encouraging sight. Because what happens with these, or what I've read now, I'm not a scientist, I'm not a professional baker, but I've read that the air inside the dough um, puffs up, expands greatly, and turns into like steam at these high temperatures. And that is what creates the pocket. So hopefully 
that is what will create my pita pockets. Because I love pita bread, but I really like it when it's like the pocket. And then you can, um, and then you can, you know, put your sandwich stuff inside. I think that's really fun. And I think that's awesome. And that is what I hope for for my pita bread. Okay, this one's just showing off because every once in a while an air bubble will pop and it'll kind of hiss at me. I am making this second round a little bit smaller. That is partially just my desire to be able to fit the rest of them on one, <laughs> on one sheet. So, I mean, we're into trying new things, right? This is not a complicated recipe overall, and if it turns out, then I can absolutely see me making pita bread on Sunday as part of like a meal prep when Scott's making hummus. I can make pita bread. All right, I can. I can absolutely fit the last one on that, on that last baking sheet, so yay me. That is less dishes to have to wash. All right. Ooh, okay, a little bit more. Oh, this is one of the end pieces. I can never get the end pieces the right size. That's okay. Okay, still waiting on my oven to preheat. 15 minutes in, you're gonna put them in for 15 minutes. No, you're not gonna put them in for 15 minutes. I was wrong. These are resting for 15 minutes, uncovered, while your oven preheats. Once it's done, putting the baking sheet, I know I've already said this, on the lowest rack, and we're going to bake these for five minutes. They should puff up. If they haven't, wait one minute, but one to a minute or so longer, but watch them closely because this is a 500 degree oven and things can, things can go get pretty hot and get a little too brown um, pretty quickly. Um, it says if they still haven't puffed, your oven isn't hot enough, so you need to raise the heat for the next batch. I'm not comfortable going over 500 degrees. That's just me. I don't think I've ever raised an oven to 500 degrees before. I don't think I've ever gone over 425. So, um, this makes me nervous. <laughs> um, once we are, transfer baking sheet to your oven's middle to top rack and bake for an additional two minutes or until the pitas have browned. So we've got five to seven minutes on the bottom until they puff, and then you take them out and you put them in the middle rack for two more minutes until they brown. You're gonna be watching your oven. I hope your light works. After that, you're gonna remove them from the oven and wrap them in a clean dish towel to keep them soft and then put the remaining dough in the oven. Okay, the baking process itself is way more complicated than making the dough. I'm so sorry about that. But I'm gonna wash my hands and hopefully by the time I'm done cleaning up, we'll have a 500 degree oven and we'll see how this goes. I feel like it definitely takes longer than 15 minutes for an oven to heat all the way to 500. Um, I, I do. I'm feeling like this is taking forever um, and my bread is like shrinking and puffing over here <laughs> while, while we wait. I know it's not been 15 minutes yet. I know I'm just panicking a little because this is new territory and it's okay. It's totally normal to be uncomfortable in new situations and to maybe feel a little bit of anxiety and a little bit of panic because you don't know if you're gonna set your kitchen on fire with an oven at 500 degrees or not. But you know what? Professional bakers do this all the time and I have not heard of many kitchen fires started by pita bread in ovens. So we're just gonna take a deep breath and Pray to Remy that this all works out. <laughs> and yes, when I say pray to Remy that it all works out, I'm talking about a cartoon rat. Okay? That's what you get here. You get Disney. You get cartoon references. 
you get rats. Not real ones, though, because that's unsanitary. But it was really cute in the movie, and the ride at Disney World was so much fun. Oh, I'm rambling. Come on, oven. Save the people. Okay, the oven beeped. We're at 500 degrees. I'm going to put the big one in first, the one with the most on it. Oh, that's a hot oven. Wow, okay. Whew. Setting my timer for five minutes, and I'm turning my oven light on so that I can see if they're gonna puff up. And Malcolm insisted on bringing me Remy because he heard me say Remy. So Remy is hopefully gonna give us a little bit of luck here while we wait. Okay, three minutes on the timer, and I know it's hard to see, but the edges are rounding and lifting ever so slightly, and there is definitely some puffing going on around the edges. That's what's causing that to, to lift up more. So three minutes left. Look, 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 look at that back one. Oh my gosh, it's lifting. They're all lifting at the two minute mark. Look at that puff up. Mal, do you see that? Mm -hmm. They're all puffing. Yay. Oh, that's exciting. Okay, two minutes left to go. That one is really going to town. It looks like a big old balloon. <laughs> That's awesome. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. I am taking them out. They are browning, so I'm going to just go ahead and put them up here for two minutes to get them nice and brown. Um, and then, woohoo! I can't believe that actually worked. Oh, I'm so excited. Okay, I am watching them very closely to make sure that they're not gonna burn up here. Um, oh, yeah, burning. <laughs> A little too close to the top. I'm gonna close that, but check this out. Look at how puffy that bread is. Now, in theory, it should start to deflate. I'm gonna set this over here. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and put my second, let me stop that timer. I'm going to put my second one in, but I'm putting it here on the bottom on my pizza stone where I should have put the other one. And that is a five minute timer. And then we wait. Okay. The second batch is absolutely puffing more at the three minute mark than the first batch did. So keeping them low seems to be the key. Although I will say that the batch I pulled out of the oven have not deflated. Um, <laughs> I don't know what to do about that. So I thought it would be a good idea if I pressed down on the pitas that were still puffed up um, over the towel though, so I wouldn't get burned. Do not do that because <laughs> that will crack them open and they will let out a puff of 500 degree steam on your hand through the towel. So just maybe leave them be or use a spatula or something, not, not your hand, not a good idea. Okay, so about one minute honestly is enough to brown in my oven and I'm gonna pull these out before they get any worse. This back one absolutely puffed up and then deflated. This one did like half and half, and this one obviously is a giant pillow. So I'm gonna let these cool, and then we will do our taste test and figure out if this was a winning recipe or not. But first, I'm gonna turn off my oven because it's still freaking me out a little. See you back. Okay, we're gonna pick a pita. They're still pretty hot. This one deflated quite a bit, so um, let's cut into it and see if we have a pocket. It's soft. It's really, really soft and pillowy. Um, I'm trying not to burn myself here. There is a pocket inside. Now, King Arthur says that if you're gonna do a sandwich with this to wrap the pita around your filling, I disagree because I want a pocket. So <laughs> I just want pockets. I want pockets. I want pockets in dresses. I want pockets in pants and shirts and shorts. And I want pockets in my pita. Gosh darn it. Give me all the pockets. This side needed to be split a little bit more, but you could absolutely put some sandwich stuff in there. 
I'm really excited to try this. Let's see how it tastes. Okay, time for the taste test. Now, the back sides of these are not brown at all, so maybe um, you could flip them over and put them in for another minute to brown the back sides, but let's see how they taste. Perfect. It's pillowy and fantastic, and I'm going to call this a winning bake for sure. Well, that wraps up week number 17 of the baking challenge. I hope that you got to bake along and I hope that your pitas ended up with all of the pockets. Pockets that you could put your phone in, your keys in, and anything else you wanted because we're big on pockets here in my kitchen. Anyways, if you enjoyed this, leave me a comment below, hit the like button. If you want to play along for the next challenge, week number 18, which I'm not going to tell you what that is because we are sliding on into May already. Gosh, that's crazy then you definitely want to hit the subscribe button below. You also want to go over to the Facebook page because every Wednesday morning, or in the case of this last week, Thursday morning or Thursday afternoon, because sometimes I lose track of time, I will release the ingredient list. That way you can get your shopping done. I release these videos every Saturday morning between seven and nine. It just kind of depends how together I am that week. Anyways, I'm going to go eat some pita bread and I will see you for week number 18.